the God's hidden work. Um, boy, on this first Sunday of Advent is all about beginnings and endings, which brings all over again. Preceding week ended last week in the liturgy of Christ the King Sunday, celebrating the final victory of God in Christ over all who oppose God's reign. One worship cycle ends and the coming of Advent, another begins. Yet in the beginning looked frightfully like the ending, beginning of Christ the King Sunday. Advent begins with Luke quoting Jesus on the last day with the excitement of the opening story of the widow Mike. Luke 21 devotes to Jesus' warning about the end times. The picture Jesus painted must have looked very familiar to Luke readers in the years after the Roman wars and the destruction of Jerusalem. Readers and worshipers in our time, well, find Jesus' words to be strange and disturbing. Some continue to look for a timeable or clue to the date of the end of the age. Others quickly go right on through the apocalyptic passage and hurries on to more familiar stories, but neither approach will do. Preaching this text can find its focus in all to remember the great biblical loop that extends from creation to new creation. The church begins Advent focusing not on the babe to come, but on God's great design for the final creation, the blast of glory. As the worship year begins, the worshiper is called to remember that cycle as a destination. That destination is the realm of God. The sermon sets a stage, not just for the holiday season or the hanging of the greens, but for the entire salvation story. Wow. The text invites the church to begin with the eyes towards the end. A preacher might explore that living in the Advent might mean with eyes on the end. Interestingly, the text has Jesus warning the listeners, don't spend all your time thinking about eating or drinking or worrying about life. What an apt caution at the beginning of a holiday season. If the church were to live in Advent with the eyes on the incarnation and the world's cons well, consuming, uh, what the Advent difference it might be. God will not only join us as word made flesh, but will be promised that the purpose of creation are be being worked out in the incarnation on the journey of God's final victory. Well, we might just explore local and global events and custom that illustrate how the church might live a different reality, full of the confident faith and that God's reign is coming. Exa examples abound. Advent in the United States is a frenzy celebration of the temporal. Anybody out on Friday, Dark Friday, you know how crazy it is in the stores, right? <laughs> Boy, that's a witness there, isn't it? <laughs> Decorations, oh, dry out and become fire hazard. 
pipe in holiday music quickly become tiresome. Gift giving and receiving are forgotten before the 12 days of Christmas are past. For most of the season, the full of activities and empty promises. In this text of Luke, Jesus calls the church, well, calls the church to center on the long view, the long view, and the assurance of the final triumph of righteousness. As the culture begins its annual holiday madness, Christ invites people to something much better, human-like. Destiny cannot be reduced to a good cheer or a hangover. God is at work creating it being fulfilled. Christ is coming both as a child in a manger and the Lord of Lords, being approached with an eye on the true prize and the weeks of Advent will be blessed rather than exalting. The season of Advent is a season of hope. Some things is dawning in the horizon oh, of our lives. Can we see it? The very meaning of the season is about or something or someone's coming. The word Advent is derived from the Latin word which means coming. In Advent season, church left its collective heads and squints towards the horizon. We take a long view, turning our gaze toward what that which is approaching. On this first Sunday of Advent, our view must be a little cloudy. The horizon is far away, and although we can see that something's happening, we cannot quite make it out what it is. To discern what is approaching, we listen to the words of the prophet Jeremiah. His words excites us because he promised salvation. In those days, and at the time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. Verse 15 of Jeremiah 33. The man, the name of this approaching, approaching one is called righteousness. Thus, in Advent, the church proclaimed the approaching of righteousness of God. It is a critical proclamation because it is a real source of hope. The world, our lives, our days cannot be without hope. Anticipating that God is going to do an merging us for the faithful and fruitful lives. The, ironically, we anticipate the future by remembering the past. We remember the glory days of Israel under King David leadership. We stress forward in order to see the righteous branch spring forth. But this is partially kind of a remembrance. In this season, we do not remember that which is happening in the past in a historical sense. We remember in ways that change us. It is the memory of a loved one's kiss, the memory of a child returning home after a long absence, a memory of the word of forgiveness for someone wrong commitment. 
The power of this kind of memory can make us cry, laugh, or even feel contentment. It is memory that never grows old. We tell the story of it again and again because each time we tell the story, we experience the power of memory in our lives. Each year, this season of Advent calls the community of faith to prepare for a visit from God's salvation. Our work is the anticipation that which God will do to bring fulfillment to all people. We are prepared for the events in the stable of Bethlehem which bring together the hope and fear of all those years as Philip Brooks in O Little Town of Bethlehem said it so beautifully. Hope is never cheap. It demands a great energy of faith. It is true because we hope when we face desperate circumstances. Jeremiah draws on the deep energy of his faith as he proclaimed that the day is coming. It must have been difficult ministry because he was speaking to a people who had lost hope. Exiled to a strange land, do not find hope easy. Into the condition of lostness, the prophet dared to speak the words of hope of newness that will come to pass because of God's salvation. Like Jeremiah, the church must draw on its energy of faith as it offers to the world a vision of newness, newness that God brings forth in the birth of Christ. The proclamation must be bold so that our anticipation can be without hesitation. The days are coming and we must make ready. So lift up your heads, let your heart be strengthened, God is doing a new thing, and to us has come the joyous and holy task of helping the world, helping the world get ready for the most blessed event in history, the birth of God's Son. Amen.